Hi, I'm Raymond Simonson. I'm the CEO of JW3, London's Jewish Community Centre and the UK's only Jewish arts and culture venue, Lovis Kai. Sadly, as you know, we've had to temporarily close our doors at the moment. Um, we've got to think about people's health and safety and we're listening to government advice. But just because we've stopped doing what we normally do in the way that we do it, it doesn't mean we have to completely stop what we're doing and what we're best at. And that is to increase the quality, variety and volume of Jewish conversation in London and beyond. So we've got some treats for you. We are going to put on a whole load of our digital archive that we've been building up over the last six years of some amazing events. We're going to make them absolutely free of charge to you. And whilst you sit down with a cup of tea and put your feet up and watch this amazing thing you're about to see now, our team are going to be planning for a whole bunch of events that we're going to put on digitally over the coming months. For now, this one's on us, it's free. But you know, everything that we do costs money. And at the moment, we don't have the same income streams that we've got. So if you can spare a few pennies, a few shekels, if you can click donate online, that'll be really wonderful. We'd be so grateful for it. If you can do that, that's great. But either way, please sit back and enjoy. We'll see you again soon. I think it still stands up as a bloody good film, yeah. don't you? Yeah. And you're excellent in it. It does. It's a wonderful film. No question, I think probably the best of the spy films. Absolutely. It was made from a wonderful book. Yeah. yeah. But when you think of the 60s and you think of the other spy films, Our Man Flint, James Bond, this is the real world. Yeah. Yes, but they didn't pretend to be, did they? No, no, they were glamorous. <laughs> This is unfortunately probably exactly as it was. Yes, yes. Yeah. And do you remember making the film still? Oh, God, yes. <laughs> and did, was the Eastern Berlin stuff, was that all German? Was that all Ireland, the Eastern German stuff? Was, was it? Set, was that the stuff they filmed in Ardmore yeah, Studios? It was all in Ireland. Yeah. yeah. Amazing, I mean, just amazing. Yeah, it looks mm. fantastic. Mm. And when you look at all the people in that film, I don't know who's left, but, you know, Robert Hardy's gone, Rupert Davis is gone, Cyril Cusick. But no. thank God, you're still here. I'm still... <laughs> Otherwise, we wouldn't be doing this today, would we? <laughs> but um, it's Ozzy Morris photographed the film. And Ozzy Morris... And it's beautiful great, great black and white photography. I mean, the art of black and white photography is now gone. I mean, the last big black and white film was The Artist, about three years ago. But, you know, everything's now... In, even Woody Allen's given up black and white. Um, but, uh, but you, what it does for the, the human face yeah. is so beautiful. Oh, it's fantastic. It shows its faults, it shows its... Yeah. It's, everything, it tr yeah. makes it a transparent yes. instrument. Yeah. Yeah. And you remember Martin Ritt uh, directing it, you rem because he's got a particular way of hanging on to things mm. and not cutting quickly. <coughs> Martin Ritt, the director. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, if you look at the film, it's very thoughtfully directed. Wonderfully directed. I don't think he was really given his due because this is a really a, a great film, I think. Yes. yes. And um, he made Leather Hustler, I think. Hud. 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 And yeah, other films. I was in one that was not good at all called The Outrage. But The Outrage is very interesting because of where it comes from. Because The Outrage, of course, of course is Rashomon. And yes. it's made as a Western, isn't it? Yes. With Paul Newman and Edward G. Robinson. And Lawrence Harvey. And Lawrence Harvey, yes. But it didn't really work. No, no. But, uh, no, I agree. I don't think he was given the Jew, or is given the Jew, Martin Ritt. He really deserves. I mean, this and Hud are two terrific pictures. Mm. You know? But um, you He was just... also a very political animal. Yes. You know, and that gave a great... Under... Well, it's about that, so that's a stupid thing to say. <coughs> but it gave a great reality and gravitas yes. to the film. There's a lot of truth in it. A great deal. Mm -hmm. And Burton, that was the third and final time... Say it again. Uh, Richard Burton, it was the third and final time you made a movie with him. Alas, yes. And he is fantastic in it. He's unbelievable in it. One could truly say when seen a great actor. No question. 
Now, by this time, because you, of course, were very closely associated with Richard Burton in the 1950s, yes. and you were very closely associated, yes. Yes. and um, I'm not saying any more than that, and you worked with him a great deal as well, but by this time, of course, he was married to the other brunette. <laughs> And, sh and, and, and if you don't know this, when they were actually filming this, on any day, Richard and Claire were doing a scene together, that other brunette was on the set. Am I right? Am I right, Claire? Yes. 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 She was watching. Yes. But yes. Those, those things don't matter. No. What remains is the film. Were you pleased and surprised to be offered that part, bearing in mind you and Burton had been over for a long time, and he then married Liz Taylor. Were you surprised? No, I think it showed his generosity of spirit. Yes. I um, mean, he could have object uh, objected. He obviously was the star in the film, and he didn't. Yeah. And I think because we'd known each other for such a very long time, we played together very beautifully, and it was very real. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And, you know, there's this common thought, we've spoken about this to one another before, but there's a common thought that his marriage to Liz stopped his great ability to be a wonderful actor because he seemed to sell his soul to the devil a lot of the time just to buy her emeralds and rubies and diamonds. You know what one doesn't know? He, he was a man, you can see it in his eyes, full of mystery, full of melancholy, very torn, really, between wanting to be an actor and, and having wanted to teach or to be a, a writer, he, acting did not fulfill him, which is extraordinary, because if one could have acted like that, it certainly wouldn't have fulfilled anybody else. But it didn't. And whether uh, she was instrumental in it, uh, look, he did it. You don't... Yeah. takes two to tango. Yes, <laughs> yes. I mean, they did The Taming of the Shrew together, so obviously he got her to do better things as well, but she never seemed to pull him into anything unless there was a huge price tag attached to it. Well, the only thing they did together that was so fine was Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. Oh, wonderful film. The rest of it was yeah. basically rubbish. Yeah, boom. Absolutely yeah. terrible. Um, but uh, of all the actors you've worked with in film, who would you consider to be the best? Him. Him, uh, Richard Burton, James Mason. Yes. really one of the great, great actors in films. Oh. Uh, Chaplin is in a class by himself, so of you can't course. compare or wouldn't want to. But uh, uh, of the great male stars I have acted opposite, and Olivier, of course, but Olivier was a great, great stage actor and could be magnificent in film, but not always. No. <laughs> not always. Uh, but uh, we've got two great film stars, if one wants to use such a word, were unquestionably for me, Burton and James Mason. Yes, because the film you made with um, James Mason, that was also set in Eastern Berlin, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. 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 It was strange. It was uh, long before this film. And of course, it made me remember that, because that we did shoot it, but it was called The Man Between, yeah. directed by Carol Reed. Um, with Hildegard Neff? And Hildegard yeah. Neff. Yeah. 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 And um, Berlin was like that, you see it, divided into the different sectors and a great heap, well you don't see that here because it's later I guess, but heaps <coughs> of rubble where there yeah. had been houses, yeah. people living under in little caves that they dug out of the rubble, yeah. uh, no food, I mean it was I don't know how to say they deserved it, because no one deserves it. And probably these were all civilians who had yes, yeah. But it, it was a terrible punishment for what had happened to them. But The Man Between, I think I'm right in saying, you don't have a great part in The Man Between. It's not particularly well written for you. I Elder don't Gunners. like it. No. Uh, it's a big part. Yes. And again, uh, it had a very good ending yes, and a very yes. good scene. But otherwise, no, I was just playing a young English girl and I... I didn't think I was very interesting. Well, I, I think I don't think that's you. I think that's the part, the way it's been written. It's sadly. Pop, pop, partly yeah, the part. Yeah. Yes. But you filmed some of that in Berlin. Yes, we did. Which is amazing, really, because I could only think of two films just after the war: a Foreign Affair, the Billy Wilder Dietrich.
they filmed a lot of location work there for that, and then the man between. I can't think of any others. I don't so, know. I don't know. You know, it's actually quite interesting to film it in the location itself, when by the mid-60s it would have been totally impossible to film the spy who came in from the cold in Germany, because politically you wouldn't have been allowed in uh, as a film crew. Yes, no. I don't know what the answer to that would be. No, no, no I, I, it's, just, yes. it's just quite interesting that in the late 40s, early 50s, the movement was still there behind the Iron Curtain. Yes. And by the 60s, it wasn't. The Iron Curtain was a solid Iron Curtain. Yes, And yes. it was only spies that went Precisely. behind it. Precisely. Um, when, when you first met Burton, you were on stage together, weren't you? Yes. <laughs> when we first met, we auditioned for The Ladies Not For Burning, which was uh, part of the uh, kind of romantic, poetic revival of the very uh, late 40s, early 50s that didn't last by Christopher Fry. Fry who was very popular at the time. It was with John Gilbert and Pamela Brown. It was very distinguished. We were kids. Yeah. And I was 18 and Burton was 24. Huh. And um, we auditioned and got the roles of the lovers in the in the play. Yeah. So that had been, it had been a very long professional relationship. I think that was 48 or 49. And then you went off, you did a play with Paul Schofield. Well, then I did Ring Round the Moon with Paul Schofield. Which was very successful. Yes, it was. So was The Days Not the Birds. Yes, yes. And um, then I went to America to, to do the film that I made with Chaplin called Limelight. And Richard went to Hollywood to make The Robe. And, and um, my cousin Rachel. Hmm? My cousin Rachel. He made that just before the robe. He made that in 52 and the robe in 53. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> it's the same contract. It's, it's a three-picture contract of Fox. I don't know. <laughs> but all I know is that our paths were incredibly alike. And our, we ascended very quickly. And, um, and then uh, we were both asked when he first, I guess, and then me to, 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 the, to the old Vic uh, to play Hamlet and Coriolanus and God knows what else. And so that relationship, professional relationship, went on and well, on. Then we made a film that I quite like, but I don't think anyone else does, called Alexander the Great, um, which Richard was, again, quite wonderful, though he wore a terrible wig. <laughs> but, <laughs> and then... Uh, then, you did the Edinburgh Festival together. The Edinburgh Festival, yeah. that was part of the big the, the uh, yeah. free tour. And then we went to Elsinore to play Wonderful. Hamlet. Uh, he played Hamlet. <laughs> um, no, we, we had a big history. and um, Look back in anger. Pardon? Look back in anger. Oh, God in heaven. The Tony Richardson I'm film, terrific. It. Yes, of course, Look Back in Anger, which is also a very, very fine film indeed. That came after yeah. the big, after Alexander the Great. So yes, I mean, you know, we had. But you you worked with. Um, you know, I'm always trying to find new questions to ask Claire, <laughs> not to catch her out, just because I read things. I think, oh, she worked with so and so. I mean, you know, Alexander the Great, of course, gave you the opportunity of working with a great actor called Frederick March, yes. a terrific actor, um, who had been Vronsky to Garbo's Anna Karenina as Sean Connery was Vronsky to you, Anna Karenina, sure. on the BBC, which yep. is available on DVD, by the way, now, commercially to buy. <laughs> hope you get some royalties. Um, but you also, I discovered the other day, when I was having a wee nosy, I thought, my goodness, she worked with one of my favourite character actresses, Judith Anderson. Uh, she played Fata... <laughs> she play, no, but you were Cleopatra. You played Cleopatra. She played Fata Tita, Fata Tita yes. which Flora Robson played in the Vivian Lee film. What was she like? She's Mrs. Danvers in Rebecca. Oh. Right? She wasn't my favourite. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, of course she'd been superb as Mrs. Danvers in Rebecca. She was a fine actress and all yeah. that. There was reasons. Right. No. She ended up in a soap opera called Santa Barbara, which she did until she was about 92. 
watching. Yes, and I remember watching it, and at one point, someone breaks in to her house in Santa Barbara in yeah. this soap opera, and yeah. she picks up a gun, and it was like this. I thought, God, oh, she's going to shoot herself. <laughs> so she obviously needed to do it for the money, but she was meant to be an amazing Medea on Broadway, and she was a very well-respected actress. But also in that production was Sir Cedric Hardwick. Yes. I mean, these are names. No, he was. Was he, he a character? Is he one? Was he a character? He was very kind and a very fine colleague. I didn't get to know him. Um, it was an amazing cast, though. Yes, he was. He was a very fine and good colleague and a very nice man. Yeah. Jack Hawkins was in it. Jack Hawkins was in Harley it. Harley Granger. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, Cyril Richard. Yes, yes. This was all for network, primetime U.S. television, about 1958, round about then? I guess it would have been around then, yes. But if, in those days, they really did, the, the American, I don't know which channel it was. I think NBC. it was C, it was NBC, I think, yeah. I think it was NBC. I mean, they, they, they pulled all the plugs out. You know, you had wonderful actors, wonderful sets and costumes, and they were truly, I can't remember for the life of me who directed it. And I don't then know. And somebody very distinguished, but I can't remember. No. And, um, you know, they did in those days two-hour plays and... They did. They, and, and needless to say, that's gone. I mean, amazingly, I mean, round about the same time, NBC did three Noel Coward plays in peak, including he played um, the main character in Blythe Spirit with Claudette Colbert and Lauren Bacall was the wives. Yes, yes. I mean, can you imagine this today? <laughs> Not hope in hell. It's American Horror Story we get now. But um, the other thing I noticed, and I had never thought this, you played Beauty in Beauty and the Beast in the Shirley Temple storybook. Yes. Ooh, you never told me. Did you meet Shirley Temple? Yes, I was and? thrilled, because I'd been such a fan of hers, of course. No, she was very much, she was then 40-ish or yes. something. Yeah. Very much, you could recognize the little face and the little gestures. And she was still Shirley Temple. Yes. And which of all the mediums, because you've, you've worked in theatre a great deal, you've done quite a bit of TV. In fact, you're working in television at the moment. Hmm. Do you want to tell everybody what you're doing? Yes, I'm, I'm uh, in an interesting television uh, called Summer of Rockets, directed by Stephen Polyakov, uh, which is the reason I'm doing it, because I think he's an extremely interesting, fine director. And... Um, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> and uh, it, can you give us anything away about the plot, or is it intriguing, or...? It's very complicated. I'm okay. not good at very complicated plots. E uh, plots. Even this one, the end, I've seen it now many, many times. It only just becomes... <laughs> and this is, this is a great thing for you to do, because I think the last TV I remember you particularly in was... Um, what do you call it? And um, you played Martin Clune's mother in... Um, oh, Doc Martin. Doc Martin, yeah. Oh, so, that was fun, yes. And with Eileen Atkins. Yes, yes. Eileen, who you yes. know, yes. No, I think, I may be wrong, that I'm the oldest <laughs> actress still cluttering around. <laughs> and I think I am. That's not a bad thing. I think it's good. I think it is. It's good. You're very, I mean, a year ago, we were on a ship together traveling, and Claire did her great Shakespearean ladies in the theater. And can I tell you, when this lady goes on the stage, she still acts in every way. Daniel and I went to both performances, and I was gobsmacked, uh, really. Uh, suddenly, she became whichever Shakespearean character she wanted to be. No, it's a great tribute to you, because, you know, at, at your young age, most people can't do it anymore, so, no, it's great. It's, it's good to have my marbles. <laughs> and you've just, made, you've just made a new film. Yes, it's true, I made a film in, in Spain. Yes. Uh, in, in, at, they would prefer my, um, me to say, um, oh my God, you know, what's it called? I don't know, I don't yes, know what the film's called. No, I don't They're know. trying to get the... Catalonia. What is it? Catalonia. Catalonia, not Spain. Oh, yes. I just said mean. I have all my marbles. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have mine. Uh, very interesting for a director called uh, Ven uh, Ventura Pons. Mm -hmm. And um, he's made a lot of... A lot of 
colorful expression, but he's made many fine films there. Uh, he is a great Catalonian uh, citizen. Yeah, yeah. And wants very much, uh, as all the people on the film did, to get their independence from Spain. So I, I, I'm, sh I, I'm not sure that I should say it was a Spanish film. It was a Catalonian film with uh, Sean Phillips, who's a magnificent yeah. actress. Yeah, great actress. And uh, with uh, Catalonian actors who are all wonderful. Whether the film would ever be seen, uh, one never knows. I mean, outside. Yeah. So, but I think it was very interesting because it was about uh, Salvador uh, Dali and his sister and, and the circle of uh, his friends who, you know, were, were Lorca, Bunuel. Wonderful. I mean, uh, amazing. Yeah, artistic group of, talent. Yeah. Yes, amazing. Yeah, fantastic. Well, I'm sure it will get shown at film festivals. I'm sure it will, you know. but I don't know whether that's its fate or not. No. And would you do the stage again? Would you go back to theatre or too hard now? Too much. Yeah, yeah, too tired. Too much. <laughs> Unless there was some wonderful part. <laughs> there was only one scene. <laughs> <laughs> and you could sit in the bath chair and be wheeled on and wheeled off. I could sit off. in the bath chair or whatever I did. Um, <laughs> but exactly. no, I wouldn't want to go through that no, eight no. times a week. No. It's hard work. It's too hard. Yeah, mm. Very hard work. Now, Claire, will we let the audience ask a question or two? Would you be happy? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Would if I can like hear to, them. If you could shout out. Because I can't hear anything. Well, I'll repeat it to you. Uh, very interesting to hear all what you have to say. But the one thing I noticed was that once in a BBC interview, Richard Burton, when asked about his life and his interests and his longings, he really said, the only thing I really wanted ever was to become an English literature a lecturer at University of Oxford. Uh, I saw this and heard. I was really surprised. And it was very, very genuine, the way he said it and what no, came out of him. I don't know what you think about it. I think it's absolutely true. Uh, whether he had the makings of a Don, as he would have wished, I don't know. He had, a, he had been to Oxford at the end of the war as a student. Um, no, not non-paying, whatever. And yes, he was mentored there, wasn't he? At yes, Oxford, yeah. absolutely. And Robert Hardy yes. as, as well, when yeah. they were there together. Um, yes, I think it's absolutely true. That's what he he would have wanted. But he also, he liked the great glamour that came with mm -hmm. his marriage. and Or at least he liked it at first, and for quite a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was it very, very difficult because I think Miss Taylor was a very possessive lady, but the fact that they divorced and remarried yeah. is absolutely yeah. bizarre, really, no, very, isn't it? Very mysterious. Yes, very odd. And it only lasted a year, the second, uh, second time. Yeah, yeah. I have no idea. I don't know. Question? Claire, one of my favourite films that you were in with um, Woody Allen's Crimes and Misdemeanors <laughs> with Martin Landau gives a great performance. I just wondered what your abiding memories making that film work? Well, um, you know, you never get to know Woody mm. at all. I won't say you don't get to know him well. You don't get to know him. Uh, so my memories are not really of being directed by, by him so much as finding my own way. Terrible fear when he said to me the first day, I don't want you to speak the lines. I'd like you to improvise around them. I'm, I'm not American, and improvising <laughs> in an American accent yeah. is something else. But I, I did it. Um, I, I, I like the people. I, I quite like the part. I didn't find it stunning. Um, I was pleased to be in a Woody Allen film, quite That's honestly. Great and I think it was quite a good one. Yeah. Yes. Do you remember, Claire, when we started um, doing this kind of thing, um, you said to me, George, there's nothing funny in my career. And I thought, I'll find something funny. There must be some humor. Even in crimes and misdemeanors, Claire's given nothing funny to do. So when we, no. when we do this, um, and we normally show clips, but because we watched the movie today, we're not showing clips, 
I haven't found any funny clips. I can absolutely say you've had the most serious career ever. It's definitely true. No one's given you a comedy line anywhere. No, I have a very miserable face. <laughs> That's not what I said. No, no, no. But I, I could have done. Uh, if I'd been asked to do it, I think I, I would have enjoyed uh, being in a lighter. You, al you always claimed you liked being in a film called The Buccaneer. Now, The Buccaneer was a oh. remake of Cecil B. DeMille's Buccaneer, and it was the last film Cecil B. DeMille produced. He didn't direct it. Did, uh, did Anthony Quinn not did he direct it? I think he did. Kind of. Was, who was DeMille's son-in-law. And that, you play a tomboy. I played a pirate. Yes. I loved it. Yes. It was complete and utter nonsense. Yes. <laughs> and I learned to throw knives, and I'm, I'm the most non-physical person you've ever met, but I, you know, I had a... A trainer and it, 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 to learn how to, I don't know, walk or run, throw, throw things or whatever the hell I did. I don't know what I did, but it was fun. And you worked with a great French actor, Charles Boyer. Indeed. Wonderful, and wonderful. Was he ever <laughs> such a great actor? I mean, it is it, it is quite interesting that you married a great actor, of course, your I first did. husband, Rod Steiger, a terrific actor. Um, uh, tell tell everybody how you met. Tell, tell everyone how you and Rod met. Oh, Rod and I met. We were doing a play uh, on Broadway of again of the film of Rashomon. Um, the Japanese, the great. Akira Kurosawa. Yeah, Kurosawa. And really, the film should have been left where it was. And but people were always trying to do something with the story. And um, <coughs> anyway, we 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 met. There, in rehearsal room. On Broadway. <laughs> yeah, Broadway. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Broadway. Do you prefer Broadway to the West End? I never would want to do a play on Broadway as long as I, <laughs> however long that is, <laughs> because it, that wasn't. But that was all right, and I did have rock support. But it's it's beyond <coughs> anything that normal people could imagine. <laughs> the fighting that goes on and the. Oh, I, I can't explain it. Some dreadful people you come across. Well, you, made, you made a couple of good films with Rod. I mean, The Illustrated Man. Yes. From the Ray Bradbury and novel. Three into two won't three go. Three into two won't go. Yes, yes, good as well. And Rod was a great actor, but I read somewhere that when he won his Oscar, and there's a lovely photo of Claire with Rod, with Audrey Hepburn at the Oscars oh, that's that right, night. Yes. A lovely photo. Um, he, Rod went into depression because he didn't get offered anything for over a year. He didn't, work. He didn't get offered any work for over no, a year. No, he did not. He didn't. And he's not the only person who's won an Oscar that this has happened to. And whether people are afraid to touch them because they're, you know, they, I don't know, or that they've become so expensive, which wasn't so in Rod's case. I think it's probably that. But he did not get offered a decent job that he could accept. I guess he was offered something or other. And he went into a terrible decline. Terrible. Understandable. Mm -hmm. Understandable. You know, that's the way that uh, industry, as they call it, pays you back for your success. It's very fickle, isn't it? Yes, it's very yeah. fickle. And when you were in Hollywood in the 50s, and you were, I know you were living there on your own, you found it, how did you find it as a place? I was very unhappy there. Um, I I just felt well. I wasn't accepted, um, but I didn't make much of an effort. I have to say, to be. I mean, I didn't join the social scene, and I've always been very bad at all that. I didn't give parties or we. Um, Rod wanted to live in Malibu, which now is terribly trendy, but it really wasn't then. It's on the beach about an hour out of uh, Los Angeles. Or, and um, we didn't really live film starry lives, uh, apart from the fact I couldn't drive then. And not to be able to drive in that city is, is quite impossible. Everything yeah, you can't get a bus anywhere. There's no such thing as public transport or taxis either. So, um, no, no, I didn't like it. <laughs> but, but, your marriage to Rod um, lasted a while, about 10, 10, 12 years, something like that, and it gave you your daughter. Yes, Anna. yes it did. Yeah. Of course it did, and also very good memories of him. Yeah. 
He was a very kind and nice man. And he was a good father to Anna. He was a wonderful father. Yeah. And she utterly adored him. Yeah. yeah. Adores. Now, do we have another question? No? Jane? Yes. You had a very long and varied career. I just wondered what your highlights have been over the years. What are the highlights of your career? <laughs> Name a couple of them. I've done an awful lot. Mm -hmm. But I mean, my, sorry, my career started at the highlight, and that was making a film with Charles Chaplin. Mm -hmm. And nothing more could happen to a young actress than that. And then uh, Richard III with Olivier, and of course my years with Burton as his leading lady, and that, those, were, those, those were wonderful. Bright's had revisited, which I loved doing. We all did, yeah, and excellent. we knew we were doing something awfully good. <laughs> and uh, I guess those are the things that I've enjoyed the most. A highlight, well, I could say with truth that uh, the greatest fulfillment in my career was playing in um, The Streetcar Named Desire. Because that's the greatest one of that and Hedda, I think, were two great, great roles yeah, for, women. for an actress. And I did play Hedda, not not that well, but I did play Blanche. And that was the first <coughs> revival of A Streetcar Named Desire in yeah. London. Was it? Yeah. Since and that got, Lee. Yeah, And that got fantastic reviews. Yes, it did. Yeah, that was yeah. with Joss Ackland? Yes, yeah. Joss Ackland, Martin Shaw, a lovely Scottish actress called Morag Hood. Oh, yes, Morag Hood. Very young yes. and she's charming. I remember. And, you know, it was, it was good. <laughs> and A Doll's House. And A Doll's House. Which was acclaimed, and then that was filmed, mm -hmm. thank goodness, yes. um, with Claire and Anthony Hopkins and um, mm -hmm. Edith Evans. Edith Evans in the film. Yes. She played the nurse, yes. She did. And, you, and Claire, you worked with one of my favourite character actresses twice. Once on the stage and once in a film, and that's Margaret Rutherford. Oh. Oh. Yes, absolutely. And also Athene Sila, who remembers. Oh, know, Athene Sila, wonderful. Great actress. Wonderful, wonderful actress. No, but I don't think there are parts written now for, for great character actresses. No, no. Well, maybe you don't differentiate anymore. I, honestly, I don't know. I don't know. One more question, then we're going to finish, I think. I was wondering to make an observation, really, I mean, the, the film, I, I, was, was the guy doing Man of the Arrow? Yes, he was, yeah, Samuel I Fuller. I love that, love that film, but the, the character I really liked he played in uh, Heat of the Night, with uh, Jimmy Butler, oh, yeah, yeah, a yeah. racist, redneck police. Yeah, and well, he got the Oscar for that. I, I didn't realize That's that. a film that stopped him working. <laughs> <laughs> That's a film that stopped him working. <laughs> <laughs> just, just to change the character, saves him from the, 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 the going to try and train whip the guy in, in, the, in the garage, I think you remember. And bless, gives him his blessing, and I think they hug or something as he leaves on the train. Oh, and it's just the progression of the character from the racist to the guy, you know, giving yeah. him credit for sure. having the murder. You know. Yes, yes. Brilliant. But they were both wonderful. Sidney Poitier was. Oh, he's wonderful. Just glorious. He take any older, does it? Well, they made a sequel. They made a yes, sequel so to In the Heat of the Night, of course, called They Call Me Mr. Tibbs, mm -hmm. which was also quite a good. Oh, no, it's not bad. But Rod's not in it, but it's not a bad film. Yeah. The one I love Rod in is No Way to Treat a Lady. Yes. It's hilarious. Rod Steiger dragged up. I mean, it's very, very amusing. So, Claire, any plans for the future? Well, <laughs> what future? Well, who knows? Um, certainly, I haven't finished the filming. The, the, well, with Stephen Kolyakov yet. I don't know. He's an interesting character. Well, we might. We've talked about doing something, haven't we? But, yes, um, we have. Uh, Polyakov, I <laughs> met once. Alan Yentop dumped him on me, that's how I put it. <laughs> and I thought he was absolutely lovely. He's a genius, Polyakov. I mean, he really is. But very interesting. And he will be so pleased that he's got you to do something. He loves the great ladies of the theatre. Uh, he told me. I asked him all about Maggie and oh, nice. the world and the sun, and I'm sure this is a feather in his cap getting you. Well, but I hope he still is pleased. Oh, he will be. He will be. <laughs> He's a very extraordinary and unusual man for yes. England, and he is a really intellectual director. And the, s the scripts are complicated. This one is very complicated. Um, there are at least three stories 
I understand mine. <laughs> I don't really understand it all. But all I know is that it has a fascination, that it's interesting. It has, you know, many, many threads instead of just a, you know, yes. a damn thing. It's got that. And, and um, whatever he does is, is interesting and well, well, well worth doing. Good. Good, that's good. And when, do you know when it's going to be shown? Yeah. Uh, Sue Deeks uh, from the BBC, do you know when it's going to be shown in the BBC? Claire Stanley from the BBC, do you know? This is terrible. Does nobody know what they're doing there? That is shocking. Prime song. Is it BBC Two or BBC One? Well, we look for what's it going to be called? Uh, Summer of Rockets. Summer of Rockets. Mm -hmm. That sounds interesting. Thank you very much for coming along and sitting through the wonderful film. I really enjoyed it myself as well. And thank you for being such a good sport in the Q&A. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. Thank you. And special place. And George, we are